Hey guys, Kriv the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to find out how to search for, select, download and process raw files from the Hubble telescope. So it's been cloudy and rainy and all sorts of uh, not prone to astrophotography kind of weather recently in Tokyo and so I'm getting slightly, only slightly, desperate. <laughs> and uh, with that uh, I've you know, I've uh, remembered that you can actually download raw files, raw FITS files from the Hubble Telescope um, archive. It's all free and available and process them. And so it's a lot of fun to do so. And in this video, I want to go through how to do that because it's not quite immediate how to find all of those images. And also the, the Hubble Telescope has like millions of different filters. And so which filters should we use in what situation and how to map them to something that makes sense? It's actually really difficult to find out. So, uh, and the reason I did that is I saw some other YouTubers like Helena from Helena Astro, who's um, awesome, by the way, you can check her channel, I put a link in the description down below, but basically uh, using um, uh, telescopes, remote telescopes that you can buy time from to take an image, except that you're not really controlling the telescope, you're just basically telling the people there or whatever that you want an image of this with this exposure time, blah, blah, blah. And then you get back raw data that you can process. And here we're just going to get data from the Hubble telescope. We're going to process it and we're going to compare it to whatever the um, big brains at NASA or whoever does the processing. I have no idea who does the processing of those images um, actually did. So let's do that. And so what I like to do to first uh, start with is to go to a website uh, called hubblesite.org and then you can, um, I'll put the link in the description down below, but in the resource gallery, you have all sorts of images and then you can filter those images, you know, stars and nebulae, galaxy, whatever. And then, you know, Hubble favorites, observations, all that kind of stuff. And it will show you a lot of, uh, you know, images that come from that. And I like to select, you know, Im images that are of uh, nebulae and like this one, this one is really nice because we have uh, the uh, image itself and we are also know how it was processed. You can see it has like oxygen three, hydrogen alpha, hydrogen alpha and N2 uh, and then whatever YJ and Fel are, you know, all sorts of weird things. And the numbers you see on the left hand side like this F502N or F656N uh, F658N, you might remember, uh, you might actually recognize the 656, 658, 60, uh, 502 as being kind of like band, uh, I mean, wavelength. Um, and it pre pretty much is the case. And this gives you the actual names of the filters used by uh, the Hubble telescope. And one of my favorite images that I see on here is, uh, is this one also of NGC 5189. And we can see this image has been taken with five filters. One is oxygen three, was, one is H alpha plus a bit of N2. And the other one is um, uh, S2. And you can see it's 673. And uh, you have like 656, 657, 658. Like some are like H alpha, like the first one is H alpha. The second one is H alpha with a bit of N2. The third one is H alpha and N2 together. And then if you go a bit further, there's S2. So it's like all sorts of filter on the Hubble telescope. And now, okay, I've identified what I want, the data that I want to get from Hubble. And for me, what I'll want is I want the oxygen three, the H alpha and the sulfur two data to do kind of a, like a standard uh, Hubble combination of uh, the data and see whether we can get something that looks like that or whether we can get something, you know, that look better to me. And uh, so to do so, we'll have to go to the Hubble archive site. And again, I'll put the link in the description down below, but here we are, we are on the archive and we want to search for um, NGC 5189. NGC 5189. And here it is. We're gonna click search and we're gonna get a lot of uh, results in there. Now, in the results that I get here, I want to add uh, the filter column. So I can click on this button, go to filter, say okay. And we should be getting an additional filter here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. 
here we are and we have the actual name of the filter and remember we want 502 we want uh, 657 I think or 656 and we want 672 and one of the things as well that's uh, very nice to know is that you have images that are uh, like very single panes and it's super interesting when you open them to see like all of those scratches that I see there and I'm not sure exactly what they are but they could actually be like cosmic rays or something like that I have no idea but a lot of those preview images have a lot of like small dots and and white dots and white lines on top of that that and I assume that when they get stacked more they're able to be removed using pixel reje rejection I have no idea how it works it's a lot of fun to see that and some of the images they have a plus sign on the left hand side which means that it's actually multiple images at once and typically these are the ones that you want to really look for because they have um, a wide field view kind of a target I think they're stitched and if I click on this preview look it took a bit of time but here we are we can see this is one of the things that I want this is exactly the object that I want to process and we can see it's 673 which means uh, that it is indeed sulfur 2 so I want to download this and I'll just click on that download button here and here it is it's downloading but it's like big it's like 200 megs something like that per image so it's not small and then we have the next one is 657 which is H alpha and uh, N2 so I want to download that as well and uh, we want oxygen 3 which is this one F502N so I will be downloading that as well isn't that I love this I'm downloading three images from a space telescope they're raw images they're fits files there's all the data from that telescope isn't it amazing I don't know I think it beats like any remote telescope in the world like a hundredfold because I, I haven't I want to try remote telescopes at some point but I'm never sure you know how rewarding that will be um, so it's like the Hubble is not rewarding because it didn't take the, the images but it's pretty cool that it's something that is in space that's still working right now and um, yeah I want to see what that gives us and so I'll be waiting for the downloads to finish and then we'll be opening that in PixInsight okay and the download is done so I'm going to actually look at the files that we've downloaded they're tar files and if you're running like Linux or Mac OS you'll be have no problem opening those if you're using Windows you probably want to have like a proper uh, archive uh, software like 7-zip which is what I use and I'll be just right clicking on the archi archive using 7-zip uh, to extract to each of uh, the respective folders so now we've unzipped or unarchived them and it's not quite clear which of those was H alpha S2 or oxygen 3 right so not to worry in each of the folders you'll have an HST for Hubble Space Telescope how cool is that folder and then you'll have the actual number there that it, that corresponds to the ID that we have here so we have um, 40 uh, 04010 which means that 04010 is 673N which is actually sulfur 2 as we saw so I am going to we have several FITS files in here and one is 1.35 kilobytes not enough and then we have two that are each 109 megapixels uh, sorry megabytes I'm not sure which is which but this one has DRZ which I assume stands for drizzle and I like drizzled files so I'm just going to use that and we are going to extract here and that will extract a fit file which I'm going to rename to s2 so I don't forget and I'm going ju just going to open it in PixInsight while I'm at it okay so the first one is opened we have some rejection um, thingies going there I'm not going to reveal the whole beauty of the image yet um, and then we can go to the others and I'll do exactly the same thing okay and I have all of my images open in PixInsight note that you'd be able to do pretty much everything that I'm going to do to some extent uh, using uh, layers in Photoshop or in GIMP or using the functions in Cyril uh, free software um, that is available now I'm going to rename in PixInsight uh, the um, various uh, images just so to names that I'm used to uh, using that way I am sure that I don't have any problem when I do my combinations and now we're going to look at it 
preview <laughs> how the data looks like. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to have this kind of data. <laughs> Look at oxygen three. Oh my word, this is, and this is so smooth. Oh my word. Ah, this, ah, okay. Well, you know, um, enough, um, enough admiring the beautiful data. I'm just gonna crop that data using dynamic crop. So I'm just going to quickly uh, do something. Now, what's really cool is that those three images, you can see they're already aligned. So they're really obviously part of a hole, of a hole that already has been aligned. So it's much easier to, uh, to process. Okay, and I've made a crop that removes most of the stacking artifacts. I'm just going to apply that, that crop to each of the uh, images in turn. And yes, I am okay with getting rid of my astrometric solution, which is embedded in that Spitz file. And here we are, we have the three images. And I'm not going to, I mean, they're so freaking smooth. It's like, yeah, there's, oh my word. Like there's pretty much no point in doing like, oh, but this one has a bit of noise. S2 has a bit of noise. Even the Hubble telescope has noise, guys. It's shot noise, but it's still noise. Oh my word. Uh, I'm not gonna bother too much with like noise reduction or anything. I'm not gonna do any uh, anyway. I mean, we want to do a quick fun processing of that. And for that, I'll just like stretch the images. So I could be using my usual preferred method is to use the masked uh, stretch um, uh, function in PixInsight. You can use a standard uh, histogram stretch or I, you can use like from the easy processing suite, uh, the um, easy uh, soft stretch, which I really like because it, it really brings the images to the same level. If you're not sure what easy soft stretch is or what the easy processing suite is, feel free to go and check up above or is it this here? I'll put a video about uh, that. I have a, a video that I did in the past. So let's apply the soft stretch to each of the images in turn. So I'll just select H alpha. I'll just keep it as default. I run the easy soft stretch and I'll do exactly the same on the two other pictures. And here we are. We have three uh, pictures that have been soft stretched to pretty much the same level. So we are now able to actually combine them and this is going to be the fun part. And to combine those images, I'm going to use pixel math and uh, I've unchecked the use single RGBK expression because we want to use one uh, color per uh, channel basically, but I am not going to use a standard Hubble palette. I'm going to use Forax's uh, Hubble palette or not Hubble palette, just Forax's palette, which is supposed to be like, which is really neat. I really like it. Uh, I have a video about that here that I'm linking to above. If you're also interested, I'll put a link to his blog post down below because it is an amazing way of combining that data and we're gonna see what that gives us. I want to make sure that in the destination of Pixel, Ma Ma Pixel, Insight, Pixel Mass, I have create a new image and I want the new image to be RGB color and then I'll press on apply and that should create a new image <laughs> it already looks really neat with the colors. At the same time, I think I'll, I'll create a luminance image. And so to create a luminance image, I'm just gonna save that process. But to create a luminance image, I'm just going to see that most of the signal is H alpha and oxygen three with a bit of sulfur two. So I'll do something like 0.4 times um, H alpha plus 0 0.4 times O3 plus the rest 0 0.2 times S2. And we want to, to have that as a grayscale image. Uh, create that. Now we have a proper luminance channel and we're gonna use that luminance channel to apply using LRGB combination we're gonna apply this luminance by unselecting RGB and selecting uh, the luminance channel that I just created from the individual images to our image here. And here we are, <laughs> this image is already really, really cool. <laughs> And uh, we can play with the colors, we can play with the hue. So I can try to go, you know, inside the curves, but oh my word, this is so much fun. You know, playing with such beautiful data is absolutely amazing. So I can use like a, a hue curve to see like how things 
you know, change by moving things around. Um, but maybe I don't really like hue curves actually. So I might just do some uh, SCNR. But this is so much fun. So let's let's actually do some uh, SCNR to remove a bit of the green while while keeping some. So I'll put the a fairly um, non-aggressive setting at 40%. And here we are, we have a bluer color. And I can just like, oh, it's, it's so much flexibility. It's almost like you don't know what to do. It's like, I, I feel for anyone who is like responsible for bringing like the Hubble data to life because it's just like, it's too easy. <laughs> I can do a small like, curve to, to get out more luminosity, to more nebulosity out of this, uh, out of this image. I can just like go ham and just like uh, saturate the image a bit, or maybe we're going to saturate the blue a bit more than the rest. It's like, wow, the sky is the limit. <laughs> so I can use a color saturation curve like that to specify, like I want some, <laughs> some more colors there. And man, how amazing. Is this and the details in the image? I think we could do deconvolution. We could do some. I'm gonna do some simple uh, sharpening. I think, like multi-scale linear transform, maybe a little bit at a scale of uh, of two. Something like that is pretty neat. We could do some local histogram equalization. You know, it's like it's so much things that you can play with in this image that it just blows my mind. I can be very conservative on the local histogram equalization, there's almost nothing to do. And I really like the color scheme that we are getting. <laughs> and here we are. I think we're getting a decent result here already. Like we didn't have to do anything really. And this is so amazing. It's a lot of fun because with such clean data, you can really test a variety of like processing tools without, without having to worry too much about noise or things like that. You can try to extract the stars and, you know, play with the nebulosity itself. And I find it is so much fun. And I, you know, like compared to the standard like Hubble palette type of uh, colors that we get here, which is very much by color, the, um, the tricolor image, a proper tricolor image that I get from here, I kind of prefer it. And then there's tons of, everyone can have their own little variation of that. And I find this absolutely awesome. So I'll be just for the fun processing another image. So that's one of the images that I saw uh, on the very first page of the uh, Hubble images uh, site, which is uh, this one, NGC 6302. I'm gonna put that along with that first image at the end of the video. Oh, and that's pretty much it for this topic. I, I think, I hope this was, this is a good idea. This is something you'll want to do. I'm personally loving this. I'm going to spend hours on this. This is just too much fun. Um, so with that, thank you so much for watching. If you're not a subscriber, first, welcome to the channel. This is a channel mostly about astronomy, astrophotography. Uh, I am Quiv based in Japan and tons of videos on the topic. If you are entering the hobby or looking into the hobby, I will also do uh, some videos more about like DSLR type of stuff. Oops, DSLR type of stuff with, uh, with this that I recently bought. All sorts of stuff coming up. So if you're not subscribed, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, click the notification bell. And you know, at any rate, if you like this video, please go down, click the like uh, button, leave a comment down below. And if you want to support me and you want to buy any material from like Amazon or from OPT, there are affiliate links down below. Yes, including Amazon as I recently uh, created an affiliate account uh, there. So if there's any equipment that you want to buy either from either site, feel free to use those links down below. I get a small commission and it is super helpful. And with that, as always, thank you so much for watching. Whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.